see if it's working. Awesome. Yay. Hey. <laughs> All right. So we're on and I think we can do this. Great. And I can see speaker view and gallery view. Okay. You know, it's still a always takes some time with these <laughs> live webcast set up when you have to produce it yourself. And um, our guest today, guest of honor is Natalie Hall. She's no, uh, <laughs> she, she's no stranger to producing things, right, Natalie? <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, there's always technical difficulties, always. Uh, so, um, well, today is um, Wednesday, June 3rd, 2020. I'm Arabella. Welcome to We Excel Daily. It has been a um, a week, hasn't it? And um, it's it's been difficult. Uh, we took a, a, a day off yesterday to honor um, our Black brothers and sisters so that they may have a platform. And I would just want to say that at We Excel, we stand by them and the Black Lives Matter movement. And I hope that we continue to have peaceful protests without the um, violence and the uh, and the rioting that is happening and caused by outside forces not related to protests. Um, so with that, first, let me introduce um, what we're talking about today. It's happier. <laughs> it's a much happier topic. Um, I think we all need it, um, but it's also related to, it's very relevant to today, to what's happening right now. I mean, it's celebrating unity in time of turmoil through diverse artists' work. And I'm very honored to have um, Natalie Hall, who's a producer and marketer uh, based in London. Natalie, th Natalie, thank you so much for being here with us and <laughs> taking the time. Um, thank you. So Thank you. <laughs> thank you. I'm, thank you. I'm excited to be here. Yeah. And, um, and I know we're going to, we have to do one, one more thing before we start a conversation, and that's our little mini meditation, breath work, about a minute and a half, because you know, we all need it right now. Yes, okay, yes, so, <laughs> yes. So everybody, if we can just, um, you know, if you can just, just sit straight and comfortably feet on your ground and close your eyes and uh, shake out any stress. Well, you can't shake out all this stress. That's that's for sure, not with <laughs> just one minute, but we'll try to shake out as much as we can, okay? Okay, breathe. Three more times. One more. And today I'd like you to meditate on peace and what that means to you, whatever that means. When I think of peace today, I'm thinking of birds chirping, I really like that. During the pandemic, it's been loud, uh, the birds chirping and everyone's on lockdown here in San Francisco. So just listen to the birds chirping and breathe. Feel the calmness around you and the warmth of the light. And feel the love and happiness. You see people smiling and hugging. Just peace, love and happiness. Now we're gonna breathe three times and then we'll slowly open our eyes. Oh. 
Okay, open your eyes. <sighs> Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us today. And um, I'd like for you to know that wherever you're joining us, we're simulcasting um, not only all over the world, <laughs> Natalie's in London, <laughs> I'm in San Francisco, but we're also simulcasting across our platforms um, on YouTube, Facebook, Periscope, and Twitch. And I'd like for you to join in on the conversation by um, asking questions and commenting, relevant comments. Please be excellent to one another. We need to be excellent to each other. And uh, yes, so without any further ado, Miss Natalie, let's talk about um, what you do and yeah. what we're doing here today. <laughs> Yay, let's get yeah. into it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, no, I mean, thank you so much for having me. This is really uh, exciting. And I guess the first thing I just wanted to say is, um, you know, uh, it has been a really, really difficult couple of weeks. And um, I'm, I'm very keenly aware that this is a time we really need to be amplifying and uh, raising up uh, black and brown voices. So I am, you know, I am aware of that and um, being on this platform, but um, you know, th the work we're doing this weekend, um, you know, we have some really beautiful original work um, from our artists of color and um, we're, we're working really hard as a company to ensure that we start, um, that we continue down our path of um, creating an anti-racist company and um, giving a really solid platform for artists of color and makers of color. So we're, so that's, that's not lost on me and that's kind of where I am today. So um, yeah, I wanted to say that first of all. Um, but yeah, we're, um, so I, I run a production company called Social Convention and um, we're a production and experience design company and our three, sort of the three main hearts of what we do is that we radically focus on audience experience. Um, we commission new work with artists and we queer cultural spaces. And that's really at the core of our mission and to us, Querying cultural spaces is very much about intersectionality uh, and creating safe spaces where um, we can have really constructive conversations, but also um, make really good art where you can sweat and be free and connect with people. Um, and, and that's really what we're trying to do. So uh, yeah, we have a festival coming up uh, starting tomorrow. It was due to be in a venue in London. <laughs> um, and yeah, a festival over three days. And, uh, you know, we had a beer garden with a sound installation and, you know, talks and after parties and all kinds of stuff. And obviously that uh, went very swiftly by the wayside after about, you know, eight months of, of preparing for it. Um, but what we were able to do is rearrange and pivot to an online festival. So um, yeah, it's called Array. And specifically what it's about is um, spatialized sound. So um, uh, fully 360 immersive sound. Um, our co-producers are Call and Response and they're an immersive sound studio. Um, and uh, Goldsmith's Music Program, which is also a part of um, New Cross Records. Um, so we have all this incredible talent um, from around London and an artist from Berlin. Um, and they have either composed new music for us or we've done um, custom remixes to spatialize uh, the music. And since we can't do it in person with a big custom speaker dome, um, we're uh, doing it in the form of um, YouTube 360 videos in uh, these really beautiful uh, environments that are sort of designed as these meditative spaces full of color where you can experience the sound in full ambisonics. So yeah, that's where we are and <laughs> that's what and we're doing. And that's amazing, Natalie. And I, I, I commend you for keeping it on. And, and I think that in this, today we need it more than ever. And, and it's a way, it's not about escaping, it's about really grounding ourselves and why we're here um, 
together, uh, living this life in this day and age. And I think that that's super important that you keep it going, even if you the pandemic happened, right? And also yeah. now that you have, you know, this platform that you've built, you've really been able to connect um, and unify uh, diverse artists in London and they're super diverse. And I just to want, I wanted to let everyone know first too, um, if you go on their website and let me, let me share my screen for that. Um, let's see, I wanted to share, I, I wanted to share your, your website here. Oh, it's cool. going to help me. Let's share a screen. There it is. Okay. So I'm going to share my screen so that you can see it. Um, can you see my site, website? Yeah. This site was uh, designed by the incredible um, John Oxton King, who swept in and oh. made us a whole festival hub on, on online <laughs> wow. with very little notice. So we're really wow. uh, thankful to him. That's incredible. And then um, let's see, I'm gonna try this right here. Should I click on this one? The June 4th? Uh, yeah, AP? you can. Yeah. Okay, let's see what that looks like. And can you hear that? Okay. Um, okay, cool. So, and then you can actually look around, see this? So I actually have a, um, okay, you can see it. I have a 360 degree, um, wow. Yeah, and I'm not hearing the sound on there, but maybe it's just the different, maybe huh. it's just your, your inputs, but um, huh. yeah, okay. there's, there's some really cool, um, I mean, some of it kind of is on the spectrum of like sound art and um, audio experience, uh, audio experiments um, yes. with 360 microphones, and some of it is, you know, fully um, like uh, beautiful kind of textured uh, music, melodic stuff. So there's a really, really broad variety of, of work that we're presenting. Um, and I'm would really you excited. suggest to have like a, a headset and-, and Yeah, and yeah, that? no, absolutely. Okay. Yes, yeah. So, Headphones are 100% necessary. You can okay. totally just view it on a, on a monitor, but- um, but if you do have VR goggles, that's that's an amazing way. To, Maybe Bose can, can sponsor us. Yeah. Hey, All of us. hey Bose, <laughs> call me. <laughs> call Natalie. I'll give you her number. Yeah, and yeah. <laughs> this is just this is just um, an old like uh, Oculus Go. So I think, but it'll be it'll be helpful for it. But you're right. It's yeah. it's more of the ambisonic. Um, sound is really what you're what, what you're going to be providing. yeah and when you move around the environment the sound travels with you um okay so we have like for example i'm really excited about um dave akumu he's one of our artists he his video his set is going live on the second night on saturday and i mean he was the front man for the invisible they won a mercury award he's jesse ware's producer um and he composed this piece of music uh, yeah, that's him, that's Dave. Dave. Um, he composed this piece of music for this festival after going and recording with Grace Jones in Jamaica. Wow. And it's all inspired from that um, experience. And Grace it's Jones. <laughs> amazing and and yeah and the music is absolutely incredible and also I you know I'm like trying not to geek out I'm like oh my god Grace Jones so yeah there's there's some really really interesting pieces in the festival I can't believe it this is I mean I can believe it how so how many artists do you have all together uh seven seven yeah three seven. three artists on the first night and um four artists on the second night and the, the first night is very much in the sort of um, cinematic, sonic, landscape, sound art world. Um, and then uh, the second night gets more into sort of melodic, um, you know, singing and things like that. Um, so yeah, really broad wow. spectrum of work. 
And how long are each of the sh- like the the sessions or the shows? So there's each each artist's set is one video. So there'll be seven videos, and each one of them ranges between five and fifteen minutes. So they okay. so they are relatively long for for online experiences, but it's 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 the sort of thing where you can listen to one and kind of you know we're telling people get a cocktail out, turn, turn the lights down, you know, get into the zone and, and, um, uh, and try to kind of see it as this meditative space and then, you know, get up and get yourself another cocktail in between sets. <laughs> Great. I'm going to, and it's free. It's 100% yes. free. Yeah. Thanks to who, who funded your, the initiative. Yeah, so um, this festival was um, funded by Arts Council England and PRS Foundation. And I mean, they're absolutely incredible. And the work that they do in the UK is just um, unbelievable in funding artists and and being able to to be experimental. Um, And then, you know, to their immense credit, when this all happened, they said, no, keep keep all the funding. Um, just just try to pivot. And so um, we were, most importantly for us, our biggest priority was to honor our commitments to pay the artists and all the freelancers involved. Um, so we were able to do that and still actually, you know, deliver an experience, which we're really excited about. So. I, and, that, and that's so important. Artists these days are, are they can't, they can't perform, right? And yeah. And so it's very difficult. And are you also um, accepting any sort of donations or do artists have any do- donations that they're? Yeah, yes, we, we do have a, a 10 pound donation ticket. So that's probably like $12. Oh, great. Um, I, I am American, but I've been living <laughs> here for a while. Um, that's uh, yeah, the do... next question, actually. It's going to be about yeah. you. So <laughs> after we talk about the festival, let's talk about you. Yeah, <laughs> um, Yeah. no, we do have a donation ticket if people do want to donate and we um and we'll you know when we when we email people we'll be messaging that but we wanted to make sure that it was accessible and that you know we had something we could sort of give back out and what's what's really exciting is that you know before even though we were so excited for the live experience it was obviously it was going to be London audiences but going through our ticket registrations we have people from Oslo and Taipei and Oakland and and all of this stuff. So that's really exciting for us, I think, to be able to say, okay, we're we're actually able to kind of send this out larger to a larger area. So and yeah. you have something live going on tomorrow, right? That's what kicks yes. off the festival. Can you talk yes. a bit about that? Yes, we have um, a talk back with um, some of the artists from the festival, live talk back, and that is being moderated by Tom Slater from Call and Response. And so they're um, our producing partners. They're a London based um, immersive sound studio. And also Simon Deacon, who is the co head of music at Goldsmiths um, College. And they have, I mean, an absolutely incredible program. They come out with, you know, award-winning artists like every year seem to pour out of Goldsmiths. So they have a really incredible program. And um, yeah, they'll be speaking with the artists tomorrow about ambisonics and making immersive music and all that. That's incredible. So we'll f- be sure to tune into that. And how do we do that? Is that YouTube Live? Yeah, that's going to okay. be on YouTube Live. All of the videos will go live on the Festival Hub site. Okay. So that site that you um, showed just there will be um, the place where all the links go live and things like that. So that's Great. the best place to go. Yeah. Okay, good. We'll, sh- we'll be sharing that um, on our social media as well um, after this um, with, with the recording of this live webcast. And if you're just tuning in right now, we're speaking to Natalie Hall. She is the producer of Array. And it's a, um, is, it, is it the first year? Yeah, year? it is. Okay. It is. Okay. And, you know, it, it, uh, uh, yeah, I think we're going to be <laughs> trying to do this again. <laughs> and maybe <laughs> and actually offline. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, actually in person. Um, person. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, this is this is the first year. So. Okay, great. So it's a, a first year, uh, 360 uh, ambisonic music festival with diverse um, artists from music artists from London and also one from Berlin and yeah. it's starting tomorrow and yeah. with a live webcast Q&A so please tune into that and then now I'd like to talk a little bit about why Natalie how we even got Natalie on the show <laughs> because yeah it's 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 yes. it's as you know as what's happening right now outside in the in the world um outside of our safe havens at home which we're privileged enough to be in to be able to broadcast this to you um we i was on facebook and natalie um who's a, also a marketer right and creative director and all of that stuff <laughs> was, said something that hey I can't believe Facebook is is like discriminating against my ads, right? I'm not even going to put words in your mouth, but basically it kind of, it, it, it just, I, I, I looked at your post and I said, what, what do you mean? And, and so mm -hmm. tell the story about what happened this Monday and um, because it's super interesting and it ties into uh, like another topic that we'd like to ad address like on another episode but we should talk sure, about yeah. why you're why we why I even reconnected with you and then yeah, and it's fortuitous yeah. that an array is tomorrow yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um you know I mean anybody who has uh oh before uh, you you start oh, yeah actually Miss Zoe Jackson says, yay, you guys look gorgeous. <laughs> Thanks, oh, Zoe. Hey, Zoe. <laughs> She's actually the reason why we're even connected in the first That's place. True. That's true. <laughs> and then uh, someone miss else. You. <laughs> yeah, definitely miss you. Um, so <laughs> an, another person, Whitney Lawrence, she's actually a marketer at Autodesk. She's one of our board members. She says, thank you for putting together such an interesting festival. So grateful for the virtual content right now. And Zoe says, agreed, thank you for bringing light to these artists. So just wanted to share that love. And then- Oh, you, lovely, thank you. You go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, anybody who's created ads in Facebook knows that it's kind of this Byzantine, you know, ridiculous uh, system. But um, I've been obviously running ads for the festival and, um, you know, I had already sort of felt that there had been, and this is a different thing, but I had, I had kind of seen in the way things, the reactions I was getting online, that it seemed like there was sort of a shadow ban or like slight suppression on event postings, right? Which like I would kind of assume, I'm like, oh, you know, maybe COVID, they're trying to get people not to gather, but already there's this, you know, Facebook is quite manipulative. And so I had already been thinking about that. And um, I was creating these ads and you can do duplicate sets of ads. And I had an ad all set up and all the text was there. It's, it was, you know, very, very straightforward about the festival. And for the creative, for the image, I had um, one of our artists who's white and the ad was approved, beautiful, lovely, happy days. Um, I, I duplicated the ad and <coughs> everything was the same. The audience settings were the same. The text was the same. It was completely the same, but I changed out the creative and it was um, one of our black artists. And as soon as I changed that creative, a warning went up um, that said this ad may not be published because of controversial or political um, content that and I think it said something about that might like inflame or take advantage of you know current situations and I just kind of went this has to be mm. like I, I was I, I was in total disbelief about it so I changed out the creative again to another image with another one of our artists who's a woman of color, same warning came up, switched out the creative again to uh, a fourth artist who is a white woman, warning disappeared. And I just, I was, I was speechless. I was speechless. Wow. And, and as the morning went on, I got angrier and angrier and angrier. And, you know, I mean, 
I think what I said on my post for what it's worth, those ads did go out, they were approved. Um, but even just the sheer intimidation of, of, of that and the fact that like somewhere, somehow, somebody had to put in a line of code that goes, you know, uh, that you're saying Flag black, black faces are inherently, you know, uh, inflammatory essentially <laughs> right it, it, now. It's, it's odd. Yeah. I mean, when I saw your post, I said, oh, really? This is, this is crazy. And I thought maybe, okay, I wonder if anybody else experienced this. And I, I wanted to just also um, just tell you some comments online. Karen Guerra says, hi, Piyama ha Habibula. I hope I'm mm -hmm. saying your names correctly. So exciting. Natalie is a star connector. <laughs> Convener, collaborator, social conventions, manifesto is all about the future we want to see now. Oh. And that is so cool. That's a cool, that's a cool comment. You're, you're flattering <laughs> you got, me. You got fans. <laughs> so um, all your all the fans, please ask questions and, and comment uh, because this is the point of this live webcast. Is, to encourage dialogue. Um, so yeah, and, and you know what's what's really interesting, um, I, I, I had, to, you, you shared with me the screenshots and I like, I can't believe it, this is crazy. And um, I, randomly, I mean, I already was going to research this topic, but mm -hmm. uh, randomly I went on Twitter, which I only started doing <laughs> again. Um, and my friend, one of my uh, friends, um, Megan Adele Lopez, who's a filmmaker in, in Paris, she posted this um, tweet about uh, another a film festival that is featuring this uh, Sundance um, official selection documentary called Coded Bias. And that is about exactly about what you were talking, you're talking about and what you've experienced this Monday. Um, so this documentary set is about an MIT media lab researcher, Joy Bua Lamwini, Bua Lamwini, who discovers that most facial recognition software misidentifies women and darker skinned faces. Basically, it's the bias is for white men is what she discovered. And she is a, um, a, a woman of color. Um, and then she, Coded Bias asks two questions. What is the impact of artificial intelligence increasing role in governing our liberties? And what are the consequences for people stuck in the crosshairs due to their race, color, and gender? And this is directed by a woman Shalini Kantaya. So it's a very much powerhouse woman um, uh, film, film, uh, woman powered film. And um, I want to show you, I want to watch the trailer together. But just so you guys know, if it, uh, if the trailer, if you can't hear the trailer, please let, let me know, let us know on your chat box. Um, and then I'll just, you know, I'll just sh share the, the trailer if, you, if we don't see it, okay? So let's try to do that. Um, and then we can have a little bit of a discussion with it. Yeah. Um, because it's, I mean, it's incredible that, you know, uh, we don't even have to make up this discussion because it's already being addressed. Here it is, share screen, hopefully this works. Okay. So I'm not hearing the sound, just FYI. I don't think I don't think we're hearing it. Okay. Unfortunately, we can't hear it. So I will stop it. It's a really I mean, uh, you sent it to me earlier today. And it's so it's so exciting. Um, and, you know, also uh, conversations I've been having with friends today about this, there are, 
so many people doing this work, right? There are so many um, brilliant, brilliant um, people, especially people of color who are researching um, bias in tech and all of this incredible stuff. And um, yeah, I'll, I'll share some of, I'll, I'll signal boost some of those people who are doing some of that amazing work because it's, it's, it's happening and it's a really crazy, scary thing. Um, this film looks amazing. I'm really excited to see it. Yeah, absolutely. And there's also, sorry if I'm going to be yelling out loud too much because it's still playing in the, my background. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I can't find, I can't find this Chrome browser right now to just, um... oh, there it is. Oh, geez. Okay. It's really too bad. Um, this is why I wanted to use my other technology. Oh, OBS. yeah. We'll share the link. Yes, we'll we'll share the link with you guys. Um, sorry about that. It's okay. We'll share the link. But basically, um, I I think that this is what happened with um, you know your discovery, Natalie, on Monday. Is it just opened up another um, issue for us to talk about in in the future? And I'm hoping that we could possibly get the director and um, yeah. the, the young woman who's the M MIT media uh, media lab researcher Joy yes. um, to to join in on this conversation because it's obviously a thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, it's very similar to, you know, I mean, this is a very, I know that you're in the middle of Silicon Valley. I used to live in San Jose. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so this is, this is like a very kind of basic, basic thing, right? But it's, it's the same thing with when, you know, they were discovering that crash test dummies, you know, uh, to test car safety were designed as like, as men and so women were getting injured in car accidents and it's the same thing here you know the the majority of this technology that we use and the code that's written is is created by white people and it's created by white men to an overwhelming degree and that's just in the dna of it so uh yeah it's gonna it's gonna have some bias that is more far reaching than we can kind of possibly even sum up, you know, I mean, it's, yeah, and, except and, and, for the people who are doing the work and summing it up much better than we can. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, all we can do is we can experience it as the users of this, te these technologies as marketers of, of our, you know, as we, as we try to show um, unity and diversity through our own platforms and then realize, wow, this is this is a this this technology is biased, and one of the things that um, that are um, it seems like we might have gone. I don't know. The internet is being funny today. Um, it's let me see if it goes back on streaming. It's kind of waiting. So even I'll, I'll just keep going because we're, we're recording it and I'll just edit it down for us, our conversation. But so what I wanted to say was um, when you, when, um, oh, we're back. Okay, so we Excel works with a lot of corporate um, partners uh, like Autodesk and the work that we do with them is um, diversity, equity and inclusion programs. And also we're rolling out a professional development program as well that's um, utilizing and giving back to our global creator network. And awesome. what, yeah, and part of this is like, you know, we work with, we have actually a very strong network of software developers um, who are people of color and women of color. And we train them in front of the camera so that they can go and cover um, these tech conferences that have predominantly white male um, audiences. And I, I, I work with, I used to be a conference producer. So I work with a lot of, uh, you know, producers like you, Natalie. Um, and one of the Actually, um, Dave Nugent, who is uh, uh, who created S um, SF JavaScript conference, okay. um, yeah, he told me he's a white guy. He says, you know what? What I've noticed is that when the panels are and the speakers are are diverse, the audience is diverse. 
So it just, yeah, diversity begets diversity. And it also comes, like, it comes to play, like, even when uh, as deep as the actual technology development in itself, like the builders of the technology is just as important as like, I mean, it's so super important to have diverse builders of the technology because then you have different perspectives being able to address concerns. And also when you're testing technology, when you're trying to like ship a product really quickly, if you're a white male and you're the only, and everyone on your team is a white man, like then how are you supposed to test face recognition technology really quickly like that? And they ship quick, right? These startups, um, even, I mean, Facebook is large, but like these startups that start, you know, that that they're the ones that innov help innovate larger companies and then larger companies uh, catch them. Most of these startups are like done in uh, by homogenous teams because sure, they're small yeah. and they want to work mm -hmm. fast. And when you're small mm -hmm. and want to work fast, you usually don't have diversity and then you end up like testing, um, you know, testing it on just like one type of person. And that's what's happening, especially as we get more advanced with AI and facial recognition. And then like, but then when you get to these bigger companies like Facebook, Facebook has really truly no excuse not to invest in hiring more diverse like uh, people. They just have no excuse. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, the, the truth of the matter is that like nobody has an excuse, right? <laughs> nobody it's, has an excuse. It's, it's not, it's really not that hard to do. And if you find it difficult, you need to try harder. Like it's, it's just, it's just kind uh. of a ridiculous, it's a ridiculous thing. And, um, <laughs> And yeah, and I mean, I think there's been a lot of, you know, a lot of stuff coming out about uh, many of these companies not only being uh, not very good at hiring inclusively, but uh, being actually quite, um, quite uh, uh, toxic places um, to work for, um, for people of color. So it's- Yes, and it's not it's even just gotta, hiring them, it's like retaining them um, you know, not retaining, but uh, the retention rate of, of, you know, women and people of color within these teams um, also have to be taken into consideration the kind of culture that you create around you, right? And, sure, yeah, and, yeah. and you're so great, Lisa, like, there's no excuse. There isn't really an excuse. I guess I give the startup founders a little bit more of an excuse, because if they're just working with like, themselves. <laughs> How can you diversify yourself? But as they hire out, I think that it, it's it's it definitely should be top of mind. And to be honest with you, oh yeah. So I don't know if you. No, I, I was I was just gonna say you know uh, I'm I'm not an an expert on this. Like I I do my best to educate myself, and you know yeah. as a person who who hires people and and commissions artists, I I have my own internal processes that are very yeah. well researched. But you know uh, part of the reason there's no excuse is because the literature exists. People have done the work. You know uh, the the very very least <laughs> um, that that companies can do is is not be lazy and and read it and and do the work because it exists you know people have written 10 million ways to diversify your workforce and it's just uh, it's 2020. It, yeah, I, I, yeah, you know what, you're right, you're totally correct. And I, and there's also other, uh, there's a lot of um, small businesses that help uh, large organizations um, do that and, and source uh, people. So I think that, you know, even as startups, I have a friend who has a, a, a recruiting firm and, and um, he is has a very diverse team, and he definitely recruits for, you know, that kind of like diversity. And, and so that, at, at the very least interview as many people um, different from different backgrounds, right? Just at the very least and really see what's out there. Yeah. And I mean, so. you know, I always, I do, I, I do sometimes um, have feelings about the word diversity because diversity is all the people all the time. Yes. It's not others. And, and that's, um, and that's partially it. Like we have to, we have to see 
we, we, we have to be able to say that it's about like, it is about radical inclusion and it is about and, and that often is overcorrecting, and that is, you know, making serious choices that, you know, maybe don't feel easy because it's not just the normal, the, the normal way things are done. Um, I'm, I'm not an expert. There are many no, and, I, I, and I don't want you to talk much on things more. that you don't feel like, <laughs> yeah, I, 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 eloquent I, ways of I, saying I, it. And, I think you're very eloquent and I like to hear it from someone who runs a, her own small business. And I, I know I can ask you about these things because you're a producer and what producers do is you gather people. And it's obvious by your lineup on Array that you take that seriously, the inclusion and the diversity and inclusion. But and also, you know, what I realized just even in the past year that the, the word that I was missing in diversity and inclusion is equity. And that and that equity is the part of like that we address like systemic issues. Right. And and, and is this are we really, truly um, giving equal opportunity to all people out there? Um, so mm-hmm. that they can come in and um, being a, being able to like participate, um, you know, no matter who you are and where you come from. Absolutely. And I'm I'm really, you know, I mean, we have someone on Twitch right now and is a little bit offended um, because demographic on Twitch is it definitely skews a bit more um, white male. And and I I don't. It's not about shaming like um, white men, uh, and it, it's it's really about just like bringing attention to these issues and saying like you know you can't help that you were born this way. <laughs> no one can, right? A certain way. Um, all we can do is just be the best version of ourselves, and that's that's what the, this webcast is all about. It's about you know sure. not making you feel bad for who you are. And, and, you know, and it's very sensitive right now. It's not, um, it's not cut and dry, like how we're supposed to, uh, like, solve everything. That's why things aren't solved yet. That's why we're in political unrest. Uh, But the, the biggest thing is to just, like, really understand, like, be true to yourself, be authentic to yourself, not to anyone else. You, it's to yourself, like really like understand like who you are and then, and be open to other people's also viewpoints. And I don't know, I don't want to be like, eh, you know, like just no, talk, no, talk, talk about that like that. No, no. And it's not about, it's, it's definitely not about, you know, saying any, you know, any group of people is, is uh, uh, inherently, bad that's the exact opposite um but the point is you know is that um the information exists on how to deprogram yourself uh from systemic racism and white supremacy and and white centrality and you know you don't have to necessarily uh, you know you're not responsible for the people that came before you, but you're responsible for helping to fix it. And yeah, and and, and uh, yourself. And that's, and that's all of our. Yeah. That's all of our yeah. responsibilities. That's everyone's responsibility. And uh, you know, and, and I feel that very strongly. And I I have a long way to go. We all we all do. And that's yeah. there's no there's no blame in that. It's absolutely. And I actually, I mean, just to just for to your point, um, just recently, I I read an article about accept. Um, accepting body image, all types of body image. And one of the really great tips that I took as as soon as I read it, I said, okay, I'm going to implement this, is that follow um, people with different body types on Instagram. Because I noticed that my feed, I was following Instagram models, like, like fitness, because yeah. there was a point where I was doing more weight training, and I was only, um, only following like these uh, weight, you know, like bodybuilders and things like that. And I realized, I'm like, you know what, this is true, like, I need to diversify my my the gamut of my of my following and I need to be able to see the beauty in all all different body types and um and I and I found some really amazing like like fitness um influencers with a different body type than what was I was following and and um this one one fitness um uh one fitness influencer her name is uh, Laura Fit for Life that's her handle she is so 
she is so positive. And when I, when I look at her um, exercise videos, it is, it's awesome. Like she just exudes such positivity and I actually really learn exercises from her because I'm not, I'm not a pro exerciser, <laughs> like, you know, like weightlifter. And I, I, and I found that, you know, I enjoyed it. And, and I, I, it took like realizing what I needed to do as simple as like following different people or like listening to different music and expanding like what I, my normal habit to, sure. um, have that sort of enlightenment that was just for myself um and it, it just made me feel like now I feel like okay this feels good like I I feel good about this you know yeah. um I just wanted to say a uh, Baba says hello and uh it, you know I I can't I can't like thank you enough Natalie I know it's really hard um, time right now to come on here and uh, because we don't want to drown out um, black voices and um, and at the same time we want to show our support and our unity with them and um, and this like we excel daily is a daily webcast on purpose because um, you know in order to uh, build a platform and 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 create influence you have to be consistent in in, in, in what you put out there. And it has to be like, you know, I, well, for me, it's really important for me to have guests, like diverse guests on the show and practice that to show the unity, um, the inclusion that we really do practice at WeXL. Uh, and that's the one thing that I can do um, as, as the founder of WeXL is to have diversity and to show you uh, that you know, there are different people out there fighting the causes uh, that are important. And maybe one cause doesn't resonate as much as um, the other cause for you. But we're here is hoping that we all unify through what really matters. And that's mm -hmm. uh, that we're, we want to excel and be excellent to each other. Um, so, uh, Natalie, thank you so much uh, again for, for being here. And um, one more time, uh, Array uh, Fest uh, begins tomorrow. Yes, uh, Array begins tomorrow. Um, uh, you can follow us at Social Convention London, Social Convention LDN on Instagram, and you can find uh, all the information there. And um, yeah, please come join us. Um, it's a meditative space. The videos will be up, so if you don't join on the night, they'll be there for you. And um, you know what? Like, if you're doing more important things, if you're out in the streets, that's you should be doing that. And you know, the most important thing right now is that uh, Black Lives Matter, and yes. that's what we've got to keep shouting out. Absolutely. And so, but yeah, if you're able to to come join us for any part of it this weekend, that would be really lovely. Yes, it could also be a way to relax as well after you do the work that you yeah. need to do out there. So, you know, just it's free. Um, hashtag free. Array Fest. <laughs> so if you want to check out the artist, thank you so much, Natalie. And um, we'll see Thanks, you tomorrow. Sarah, Bella. Thank you. And um, we'll see you tomorrow. Aaron Wilson, he is an inspirational uh, speaker. Uh, he'll be joining us tomorrow um, at 1230 p.m. Pacific time, 330 p.m. Eastern time. Thank you so much and take care of yourself and be safe. Bye. Bye. Bye, Natalie. Thank you. <laughs> okay. We are.